through it all, through it all, a flame to the pan on his word, through it all, through it all, a flame to trust in Jesus, a flame to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've led to the pan upon his word. Through it all, through it all, through it all, I've led to trust in Jesus. I've led to trust in God. Through it. Oh, 
Provisions, it never ceases. We serve a great God. Wherever you are, I just want you to lift your hands. Just lift your hands. And as all the name of the Lord, in your own words, worship Him. Father, we just want to worship you this morning. Oh, Lord, we Lift up your voice. Lord, we bless your name. Lift up your voice. We glorify your we name. We worship you, King. There is no one like you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. Oh, Lord, you are Lord. We are bow, worthy we to bow. Be praised. You are worthy to be we glorified. We bow before your throne, Lord. Receive all we the bow glory before and adoration and praise. Your throne. We worship your King, Receive Lord. Receive all the adoration, praise, you and worthy, praise, Lord. Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are holy. Worthy, You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are holy. You are holy, Lord. You are so holy. You are so holy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed, hallelujah, hey, hallelujah. Blessed be the name. 
casa Filho, nem mal pra você Let's 
Let us see the Lord. We will see you alone and worthy. You alone and worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Let us see the Lord. Holy is your name. Let us see the Lord. Glory be to your name. Let us see the Lord. You alone and worthy, Lord. You alone and worthy, Lord. We worship you, Lord. So we all be silent before the king. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We glorify your name. We glorify your name. Oh, oh, my Lord, we glorify, we glorify your name. We glorify Lord, your, your name. name. This morning we glorify Lord, your, your name. name. us to pray for her right now that the mighty God will reach out to touch her in Jesus name in lift Lord, your Jesus. voice Father, lift we pray your Lord, voice. Lord. Jesus mighty name Lord, Lord we lift our voices oh God committing oh God her unto you wherever she is in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit oh God visit her wherever she is right now in the name of Jesus Father for you are the power we give you our prayer. Oh God, sending from the Holy Spirit healing power, even to visit her wherever she is, in her home, in the hospital, wherever she is, we send from the healing power of Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We pray for healing. We pray for healing. We pray for recovery. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we pray. Oh God, we commit. Oh God, the Auntie, oh God, our Auntie, our sister, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Oh God, let Your power heal her right now. In the name of Jesus, even as we pronounce this, in Jesus' mighty name.
Our Father, we thank you. We commit our ministers and into your hands right now. We pray for your supernatural intervention in her life. We pray for your healing power to touch her right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for your revival in her life in Jesus' name. We thank you for your intervention in her life. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. We are here once again together as the believers of Jesus Christ. That we are here for one purpose. To be in his presence. For him to speak to us. And we also to obey. Amen. Amen. This year our theme is Revive Us Lord. And pastor has been speaking a lot to us about this theme. Hosea 6, 1 to 3. Revive us, Lord. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces. Now he will heal us. He has injured us. Now he will bandage our wounds. In just a short time, he will restore us so that we may live in his presence. Oh, that we may know the Lord. Let us press on to know him. He will respond to us as surely as the arrival of the dawn or the coming of rains in early spring. Amen. Amen. This is an invitation to return to God. Israel has forsaken the way of the Lord, and they have turned away from him to worship idols and false gods. And the prophet called them to come back to God. It is a call for both personal and the national revival. It's a call for repentance of their sins and turn their heart back to the only true God. Amen. Amen. And we heard from pastor that this revival is the action of God that changes people. And we know also that revival also is to be restored, to bring back to consciousness, to renew, to strengthen, and to give energy. And so my question this morning is, my topic is, when do you seek revival? When do you and I seek revival? That's my topic this morning. And we can tell that there are certain indications which call for revival in our lives. There are certain things that is signs that shows that you and I need revival in our lives. Amen. But personally, for me, I need revival in my life. I need it every single day. I need to be revived. I need the strength of God. I need the spirit of God. I need the energy of God. I need the passion and the zeal of God in my life. And so it's not a season for a revival. It's a daily revival for me. Amen. Because sometimes I struggle to hear God's voice. I struggle to get a word to preach. I struggle to pray. I struggle even to do daily work. And so revival for me is every day. But I don't know about you. <laughs> Let's read Revelation 2, 4 to 5. One of the ways that we need indication that call for revival is when you do not love God as you once did. When you do not love God as you once did. Revelation 2, 4 to 5. Revelation 2, 4 to 5. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did first. Look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. 
If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its places among the churches. In the letter to Ephesus, Christ praised the church for their hard work, patient when you read before, and perseverance. But he stated that they have forsaken their first love. All the things that they were doing, all their persistence not to give up, all their hard work as an usher. You come here first in the morning, you clean here, you push the chairs down, you usher people to sit down. But this morning, God is saying that you have forsaken your first love. You come here as a minister. You are doing your ministerial work. Every now and then you are calling people, checking on them. But God is saying that you have forsaken your first love. We are singing. We are doing all those things that we are supposed to be doing to make sure that outwardly we appear to be Christians. But he's saying that we have forsaken our first love for him. And not even our first love just for him, but to one another. Do we forgive when people offend us? Do we love them as God loved us? First he said, love me with all my heart, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. But he said a new commandment that I give unto you. That you love one another as I have loved you. The kind of love that he has loved us is unconditional. It does not base on anything. It is sacrificial love. Can we do that? Let's ask ourselves this question. Can we? He laid down his life for us. He took our place. The sins that we're supposed to carry. We were supposed to carry the cross, but he took it upon himself. He went on the cross. The shame that he, he received, the beating. For me, I was supposed to get that. But he took all that for me. And so if I stand here and I do not forgive someone who offended me, then what am I trying to tell him? Am I better than him? Are we better than him? No. We have forsaken our first life. And there is a call for us to return to God. And he himself is calling us. And he said, repent. And so the first thing we have to go back to God is to repent from our sins. Hallelujah. How, when do you seek revival? When you do not love God as you once did. When you are lukewarm, Revelation 3, 16. But since you are lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. These believers in the church of Laodicea were wealthy, but spiritually they were poor. Everything, they had everything. They have money, they have clothes, they have shoes, they have houses. Most of us, our shoes in our house, our clothes, everything, our money in the bank. I don't have none. <laughs> I don't have the money. But yet still, their spiritual life was so poor. Hmm. And they thought they had everything. When we become lukewarm and one foot is the outside and the other one is in the house. When we are no more interested in prayers, when we come for prayer, we will rather watch football. We enjoy taking our children to football, but we don't enjoy bringing them to the presence of God. We don't want to even sit them down and teach them the ways of God. When all these things are happening in our lives, we need revival. Amen. 
We need revival. When you witness trouble, when you witness trouble, it's time to seek revival. Psalm 71, verse 20 to 21. It says, You have made me see many troubles and calamities. You will revive me again. From the depths of the earth, you will bring me up again. You will increase my gladness and comfort me again. And then she says, you have allowed me to suffer much hardship. But you will restore me to life again and lift me up from death of the earth. You will restore me to even greater honor and comfort me once again. When we witness trouble in our own lives, it is a sign for us to seek revival. When we witness calamities in our lives, in other people's lives, what do we do? When we see our family members going through hardship and troubles, what do we do? Do we sit down and talk? What do we do? This is a time to seek for revival. It is a time to go before God. It is a time to ask God to strengthen. Because he says, you have allowed me. We need to ask that question. Why he allowed us to go through certain things? Why? When we forsake him, when we lose our first love, he will allow us to go through certain things. When we become lukewarm, he will allow us to suffer. It is not my words, it's the word of God. You have allowed me to suffer. You have allowed me to go through these things. Then it is a call for us to seek for revival. Because when we go through hard times, when we go through troubles, we lose our strength. We, oh, oh, we lose our energy. We come to a place that we feel like we want to give up. There is no strength to carry on. If you go through troubles one after the other, you see that your energy, your strength, if your spiritual energy, your mental strength, your emotional energy, your physical strength will go down. It is a sign for you and I to seek for revival. Amen. Because without his strength, you will not be able to move forward. You will not be able to stand and you will give up. It says you will increase my gladness and comfort me again. Hallelujah. That is the time that we lose the joy of the Lord. This is the time that we lose the joy of coming into his presence. Because it's in presence, there is fullness of joy. But because you are going through hard times and troubles, you don't have that joy to even come to his presence. David said, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and make me willing to obey you. When we go through hard times, when we see troubles, we don't want to obey God. We want to do our own thing. We begin to ask questions and say, if God is there, why am I going through these things? Why is he not taking me out from this? But we have forgotten that he has allowed us to go through it. Whether you like it or not, sometimes he will take it away from you. Sometimes he will not. And that is why his grace is coming. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. And so during those hard times and difficult times, if you and I can only know that it is a sign for us to seek for revival, then that grace will be given to us. 
that we will be able to stand. He gives grace to those who are humble. If we can humble ourselves to come to his presence and say and call upon him and say that, Father, I'm so tired. I'm so troubled. I cannot even forgive. I'm in so much in pain. I have been there. I was so much in pain. I was so broken into pieces. I did not know the next day what was going to happen to me. I was so bitter. But then I had to say to myself, I cannot be in this situation for so long. I have become like a cripple. I cannot walk. Spiritually, I am crippled. Mentally, I am crippled. Emotionally, I am crippled. Physically, I am crippled. But God, it takes only you to get me to rise up. And so, in my difficult times and troubled times, I had to turn to him. And he revived me. Once you revive us again so your people can rejoice in you. Once you revive us again. He gives power to those who are weak. And strength to those who have no might. But before he can give us that power and that strength, we must wait on him. Amen. We must wait on him. And then he will give us that power. He will give us that strength. He will revive. He will renew. We will run. And we will not be weary. We will not be tired. Because he will infuse his power in us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When do we seek revival in our lives? Habakkuk 1, 2 to 4. It says, how long, O Lord, must I cry for help? But you do not listen. Violence is everywhere. I cry, but you do not come to save. Must I forever see these evil deeds? Why must I watch all this misery? Wherever I look, I see destruction and violence. I am surrounded by people who love to argue and fight. The law has become paralyzed. And there is no justice in the courts. The wicked far outnumber the righteous. So that justice has become perverted. Habakkuk saw trouble and sin everywhere. He was burdened with the sins of the nation, of his people. And so Habakkuk, asking God these questions, why, how long, oh Lord, must I cry unto you for help? Can't you see the things that are happening can't you see the troubles? Can't you see the sin? When we witness trouble, when we witness violence, beloved, there's so much violence in this nation, in our communities. Every single day we hear news about a youth that has been killed. What do we do about it? This is a call for revival. Amen. Sin is everywhere. When you open your WhatsApp, when you go to Facebook, when you open the news, sin is everywhere. It's coming to our doors. Even in the house of God, we cannot mention it. Sin is everywhere. This is a call for revival. What are we doing? Those of us who call ourselves as Christians, as the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, that has been sanctified by the blood of Jesus. What are we doing concerning the violence that we see every day? 
Our teenagers, our generations are being wiped away. This is a call for revival. In our lives as individuals and in the church, when we see all this evil, the crime, the knife crime, does it touch our hearts? Or is it because it is not our child? Nothing push us to go before God and cry for help. That is what Habakkuk was doing. He set himself apart. He positioned himself and began to cry to God. Beloved, when do you seek revival? When we see destruction, what do we do? When we see strife and contention, what do we do? When we see marriages are falling apart, what do we do? When we see and we hear men changing the things of God, what God had created from the beginning of foundation, that a man will leave his wife and commit himself to his wife, and the two of them shall become one flesh. But now what are we seeing? What are we hearing? What are we conforming into? What are we trying to change in this world? Does it push us to call for revival? Or do we want to just dress up and come and sit here and rejoice and go? It is a call for revival in our lives. The word of God has been ignored. The truth is not even being spoken anymore. The truth has been changed to become lie. And people are following the lies so much. Prophets, men of God, that are changing the word of God and deceiving people because of lack of knowledge. The word of God says, my people are perishing. Because even we believers of Jesus Christ, we are so lazy to study the word, to read the word, to pray, because he has given us access to the Father. Because of the blood of Jesus, we have the access to the throne room of grace. We do not go through anywhere. But yes, still, we are so lazy. And people are taking advantage of us, our children, our family members. What do we do? Do we rise up and build? The walls are being broken and falling down. Nehemiah rose up and he said, let us build the, house, the walls of Jerusalem. Have you seen any wall? I'm not talking about physical walls. I'm talking about the spiritual walls of human life that has been broken and tearing apart. Are we seeing all these things? What are we doing about it? It is a call for revival. It is a time for us to rise up and begin to call on God. This sign should be a call for revival in our lives. In our churches and the nation, we should cry out to God for repentance and restoration. Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, "If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, 
I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and restore their land. This land needs restoration. We all can see and can tell that our land needs restoration. Africa needs restoration. Africa needs restoration. England needs restoration. But it takes us to rise up and begin to cry so that God will heal the land. He is depending on us. He says, if my people that I have called by my name will humble themselves and realize there is a need for revival in this land, and they will turn away from their wicked ways, repentance is turning away from where you are standing, the things that you have been doing, that does not please God. You turn away from it. And he says, then, I will hear and I will come and heal the land. Beloved, I read that when revival hit waves around 1904 to 1905 by Evans Roberts, churches which were half full were not able to hold all the people eagerly to come to find Christ. Beloved, are we seeking for people to come? Then you and I need revival in our lives and in the lives of this church. As a body of Christ, we have to rise up and build his church. If you want this church to be full, then we must rise up and call for revival. I heard that one pastor service will start from 6 a.m. until 12 midnight. Crime was reduced to almost nothing. Magistrates were given ceremonial pair of white gloves when they arrived at the courtroom, signifying that there were no cases to try. Beloved, we need to see the revival in this land and in this nation. For me, I want the revival to start from Bentuk. This is where we are and this is where God has placed us. This is our Jerusalem. Amen. Our attitude and our behavior must change and affect this community. Even before we open our mouth. So that any crime in this land will cease. They will put their knives down. We have seen enough that that should call us to rise up and seek for revival. A reporter went to a police station asking the policemen what they did that there was so little crime. He was told, we used to serve two purposes, dealing with crime and controlling the crowds. Now that the revival has come, there is no crime. So we go where the people are, to the churches. We have several good singers who have good voices among us as police men. So we have formed three quarters and sing at the meetings whenever we get chance. In one year's time, around 150,000 souls were born again. Beloved, we need revival. I need revival, as I say, every day in my life to cry out for my people, my family, my children, when I see them going through trouble, I will not sleep. I will not sleep. 
I need to make sure I ask God, Father, give me that energy. Give me that strength. Revive me so that I will be able to stand in the gap to intercede for them. If we see anyone suffering, going through certain things, swimming in sin, what do we do? Do we gossip about it? Do we talk about it just like that? We, do we spread the news? Or do we go on our knees and cry, the father, bring him back, bring her back. Do we do that? Or do we just put more on that person to drive them away from the presence of God? This is not the life of a Christian that has been bought by the blood of Jesus. We must be thirsty and hungry for revival. If any man is thirsty, let him come to me. Anyone who believes in me, let him come and drink. Rivers of living water will flow from his heart. John 7, 37 to 38. Beloved, he alone is the source of our revival. He said, come, come to me and believe. When you come, I will revive. I will restore. I will strengthen. I will energize you. Then you are able to stand. Then you will see that out of your innermost being, there will be that power. That will come. And that power, when it comes, is boldness. Is the confidence to be able to speak about me. To be able to demonstrate me to people through your behavior and your character. Because there will be a transformation in your life. People will begin to see you differently. Then they will ask, what is going on in your life? Because now you have received that joy of that salvation. That joy will begin to come out. It is from inside of us that will show outwardly. You will not age. And people will begin to ask, why are you always like this? And then you will say, it is the doing of God. It is God who has made me like this. Amen. 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 When do we seek revival? When you do not love God as you once did, 